a small place called Barrow in Furness, it's in Cumbria. It's a kind of funny place because uh, it's a penin- on the end of a peninsula, it's a kind of finger sticks out into the Irish Sea, and uh, Barrow's right on the end of it, and there's one way in and one way out. Um, it was originally, um, came about through iron, there was a lot of iron ore deposits there. So in mid 19th century, a lot of people went there to dig the iron up, and later the steel. Anyway, um, you know, I was brought up there, um, and I could always draw, you know, I was quite a good drawer. I mean, you know, you, just that was something I could do. I wasn't especially, I couldn't play football particularly well or anything like that, but I could draw. It was not something that really would have been an obvious profession for myself. I mean, I went to a technical grammar school, but where you were being, most of the people in Barrow were being farmed for the shipyards, or the steelworks, you know, engineering. The school I was at, you could go in there as a plumber or anything up to a uh, uh, naval architect. You know, a lot of people got quite senior jobs, you know, a lot of people, quite a lot of clever kids at my school. But, you know, anyway, I, went, I decided to, go, so I went to go to art school, and I was accepted at Manchester. But when I went there, um, I'd been there a few weeks waiting to get some money. They used to get grant money then. But my the local authority of Barrow was in a peculiar um, situation. They had their own auton- autonomy. They were even part of the actual, it was Lancashire then. They were separate from Lancashire and they didn't give me any money. In fact, there was a kid at my school who was an actor. And he'd even been in the National Youth Theatre production on television, been shown as a, as a major player, not just a kind of like somebody in the background. And he was accepted at Bristol or somewhere, and they wouldn't give him any money either. You know, they were they were pretty fierce and uh, ignorance basically. Anyway, I had to leave, and I had to get a job in the shipyard, which was a place I really didn't want to go because it was a, it was a big place, and there was a term called Vickers Robots, which implied you know um, the way that people were treated and felt about the place and so on. But it was a kind of interesting in uh, visual and. Uh, physical way because of the scale of everything. Everything was massive. It was like being in that thing the borrowers or something. You know, the ropes that were the thickness of your legs and so on, and chains and um, and the cranes, even when I was a small child there used to be about half a dozen massive cranes around town. And they were like monoliths. So you had a great kind of um, measure of scale, you know, so you you know you knew you were actually quite small in the scheme of things. That's what I'd say. And then there were you know, in the way that the you know the Egyptians or Greeks or whatever used or Romans or whatever, all these civilizations used scale to intimidate um, you know the the people they want to uh, um, to believe in them. But um, but anyway, in the shipyard, you know, I mean, I did enjoy that aspect of it. I worked so I, and I enjoyed the guys that I worked with. I worked with coppersmiths, um, and they had great skills. You know, all the skills in there had to be really top quality because they were they made submarines and. Um, and they were going deep down into the, under the sea and they had to fire, they weren't actually fire nuclear warheads but they were nuclear power, they were called hunter killers. But equally the pipe work that we worked on had to withstand immense pressures anyway, the pressures of the uh, compressed air that was going through it but also the bulkheads and so on. But equally I had lots of ideas then for um, when you go in any underground station virtually now where it's got all those big things with the, with the tracking, you can see the insides of it, and even that Richard Rogers thing. It sounds a bit grand, this, but I would claim that I had ideas for making all that stuff <laughs> when I was 18, because you saw it wrapped around you, you saw different shapes, the bulkhead and the submarine's curved, it's not often you're in a room that's, that's like that. You know, and, and the cables were all followed the curves, and we our pipes had to as well, you know, and they were all had to be clipped and neat and so on. And it was a beautiful kind of linear, I don't know if you call it symmetry, but a fluidness of it, you know, a fluidness. And it was there was there was a lot of that stuff that kept me alive basically. And, but I suppose the um, you know, going back to the early period of where your imagination because the first time you saw pictures was in church, you know, I was brought up a Catholic and and, and there, you know, I was saying in the house at home, you know, the only colours perhaps were on the line or on the, on the floor and so on. But in there, you've got the stained glass and you've got the, all the really elaborate, beautiful colours and, and, the, and the atmosphere. A bit like here, actually, it's sort of cross between a church and a dungeon or something. Um, and then you had the idea of things that were metaphysical that weren't of this world, basically, you know. The idea of what's out there. You know, and of course Barrow's been, it's the kind of, this, uh, you 
can see the stars a lot clearer than you could in Canada City. And, um, and, and so, you know, you, the idea of, of distance and vastness and God knows what was a strong one, really. And um, I mean, at physic and school and in physics and so on, I was interested, but I kind of didn't quite get some of the, the hard bits to do with equations and, and whatnot. I had an instinctive interest in it, you know, I mean, I would have liked, you know, and so in the way that I wanted to explore it was by my own intuition, which just seemed to have fitted together because the more I found out about stuff, but the more you realise that, you know, you're completely tied up with that yourself anyway, you know, the, the, um, the elements and the uh, materials that, that our physicalness is made of, it's the same things that are out there in the universe, it's just about scale, basically, and the piece there is down there, it's called Inside Out, is, is about that, where I've used images of galaxies, supernovas, um, comets, and, um, and so on, and against images of, of us, and, you know, the lips and parts of our bodies, to show the similarity. You know, and and uh, and and and, sing, and the chance thing. There's some little gambling symbols in that. So um, you know, I was kind of then. You know, you think, and the actual story behind uh, the scientific idea of where you come from, of the Big Bang, and about energy creates mass, and about understanding uh, time, evolution, for God's sake, because that was a mystery. And he said, I mean, you know, a lot of the information, even when I was growing up, wasn't around. That's around now. You know, and I'd be constantly kind of anyone I thought might know about these things, I would be asking them. <laughs> Nobody really seemed to give me any satisfactory answers. But the, you know, in this thing, in a lot of this work, is about it's about, you know, I think it's about the soul. You know, certainly the soul sponsors the um, the inquiry. You know, and, and the need or the feeling that you want to kind of flesh out and to, to, to make shape and colour to try and describe some of these things and for instance to tie it in with the what I was saying before about the church and the, and the stained glass and the dogma that went with that you know there's a piece through there called tabula Reza where you've got a glass that's 100 years old and there's 66 panels hanging down and then you've got light coming through it and you know there's there are, there's not there's no images there's no images from me on it so there's none of my propaganda on it and there's no dogma from any religious source on it all you've got is the light being engaged with the glass to create um, a place to kind of respond to so that so you you know the simplicity of it is it's you know the light <laughs> the light and color and being and, and the things that exist in nature are just enough really you know that you don't really need we, we don't really need backstories to do with either angels or um, I don't know or devils or all of the other things that really are divisive in, in life and, and create divisions and wars and fuck knows what else and and the, the statements I want to make are just about the things that, that bother me, if you like, that concern me. Equally, I want to make pictures that have got a vibrancy that are quite beautiful and attractive and a physical, um, and, and you can get an emotional responses from them, you know, that are, even though some of the themes have got a kind of darker aspect, you know, things to do with war, uh, you know, in the way that, you know, I suppose the Mexican Day of the Dead thing, you know, which is about death, but equally the, the, the pageantry and the, the, the um, the performances and things that go with it is a kind of turning it round, you know, it's celebrating it. So if I'm doing a picture there, which is partly referencing the First World War anniversary and just the general puppeteering and gamesmanship that's being used on a daily basis, you know, and the consequences of slaughter, really, you know, and that. But equally, I've used it in a kind of semi-funky way where the, there's a kind of border of uh, things stuck on in my painting the references fairgrounds and circuses because it is a bit like a circus and a bit like a circus ride you know I'm kind of giving it some kind of um, colorfully funky essence so that it's a kind of you know it's not going to utterly depress you at the same time as making you think and consider you know it has a it has, it has an appeal to it um, and so you know in, in my work I don't know you know there's the stuff you know in, because a lot of it has been about work as physical work as well and the, the new series which which is about the 
some of the negative side of those photographs of when, when the places I was speaking about as steelworks were being pulled down. I wanted to record that. I wanted to make sure that there was still some record of that experience. But that's when I took them a long time ago now. But what I've done is I've resurrected the negatives and then reprocessed them and worked on uh, and, 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 and because there's not there's no legacy left now. There's nothing to be seen uh, that they ex ever existed. The trading estates or the houses or the golf courses or the different things. And so what I've done is done is reshaped them in a way that I've called it the ghost series. So the only thing that's left is, is the are the ghosts of, the, of these these. Uh, Places and communities, and the, the 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 strength of the people, and the and the spirit that went into the you know working in there and producing the the raw you know the goods, the raw materials, and that's what I have been doing on a kind of a you know on a for the last almost forty years basically since you know in between doing these things and and whatever else in life you know gets in the way. Um, and you know these are my just my little bits of traces of, of saying I, I was here a bit, but I've also you know I've I've tried to make a few comments that I think are you know are worthy enough as well, um, you know and, and yeah, and if it's to do with for instance that thing that I've described in a, a roundabout way going from the the fear and the indoctrination from the Catholic faith through to the tabula rasa and the sun worship and so on. The idea that the elements and being, and if you want to believe in heaven, it's here, mate, because, you know, as far as the Hubble telescope can see, there isn't anything with much, you know, active richness in our terms anyway, in terms of life. So you've got, you've got quite, a, um, quite a pageant of riches here, you know, and, and when we're certainly not using them when instead <coughs> instead of enjoying it, you're blowing the bits up all the time and you're killing most of the people in the places, you know, and, and, and turning them against each other. So, you know, um, I think cinema, writing, painting, you know, um, has a, you know, a lot of role to play in terms of storytelling and, and driving people's emotions and their, um, and their moral compass.